Mr. Huberty. Thank Chairman you. Chairman Huberty. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Representative Toth. By the way, sorry about the loss of your dad. I know it's been a tough, tough, tough few days for you, buddy, so I appreciate it. A um, couple things I just want to clarify on. I, met, I met, visited with you earlier. I had some concerns. <clears throat> so if I, I want to make sure I have this right. If I look at page one and two of your committee, one, two, halfway through three of your committee sub is the first components of what would have been viewed as SB3. Is that correct? What page are you on? Uh, page one, two, and, and two, and then the top part of three. That, that, that is combined from um, uh, Senate Bill 3, I believe. Is that accurate? Do I have that? I think I have that right. Correct? Yes. Are you talking about media literacy? No, the civics training. The civics training program. I'm, I'm at the top of page two. I'm sorry. Oh, just page one, which is, one. I look at section 21.45555, which is civics training. That can't, it, it, let me state it a different way. If I looked at your original filed version of House Bill 28, that did not have that. You add, this came in as part of the substitute. Is that right? Yes, sir. Got it. Okay. And that was in Senate Bill 3. Yes, sir. Got it. Okay. And so, and I know that we're going to have some testimony from, I see Dr. Ellis is up on the screen from the State Board of Education that's going to talk about that, that we'll be able to talk to that. Is this something specifically that is not being done in, 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 our, in our current TEKS or, or required relative to training or anything like that, um, specifically right now, that is, that is necessary? Is that why this is included at this particular time? Yes, sir, time? it is. And so... Um, it, it is not the, being included or it is it's being not, included? It's not currently going on. And so this is something that we had heard when we started developing the bill. We heard from social studies teachers that there's not a lot of civics... There is, there's a void in civics training and schools across the state of Texas. Over the years, on um, particularly when we talk about, um, you know, uh, social studies and all the other things that are going into it, this is one of the the biggest areas where we've had a problem with the amount of teaks that are out there. So, are you trying to reduce the amount of teaks, increase the amount of teaks? What What is the intent of what we, you're trying to? We accomplish? don't want to change. The teaks in any we really don't want to change the teaks we don't again one of the criticisms that we had coming out of 3979 was that we added too many reading materials to the teaks and so if you go all the way back to the back of this bill this is page 11 Nothing in this section may construe it as limiting the teaching or instruction of the essential knowledge and skills adopted under this subchapter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but on page nine, you see a teacher, administrator, or other employee of a state agency, school district, or open charge may not. And then it goes through the list of all the things they can't do. Right? Do I have that right? I do. Where are you? I'm sorry. Page nine. Yeah, as it relates to critical race theory. Well, some of it's not critical race theory, but that's... What, what, I'm sorry, what line are you I, on? I mean, I don't, you know, I, oh, I was great. on page nine. Page nine? Page, yeah, nine, four, <clears throat> line eight, nine, and ten. Just says may not, and then it goes through a list of. Yeah, and, and probably this, 25 this again is, different, let's, 25. let me read it, okay? Starting on page, line eight. A teacher, administrator, or other employee of a state agency, oh. school district, or open enrollment charter may not, may not, require or make part of a course that one race or one sex is inherently superior. That's not in the teaks. Surely it's not in the teaks that one race or one sex is superior. No, I, 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 no, I get that. I'm just saying, I, I'm going through and I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand what, what all this stuff is. You, 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 so, so I just want to make sure that you said nothing can be taught, but they can't do, there's certain provisions here. here here's what I'm hearing is that, you know, first of all, in, in, the, in the current teaks, in our current standards, Critical race theory is not in our current teaks. Would you Correct. agree with that? Okay. And would you agree that that you, you made a comment that, um, and I got to find it because I made a note of it, um, on the specifics on critical race theory as a growing movement. But critical race theory has been around since 
the 60s 70s. and 70s, right? You know, I mean, so right. we know that, that this is not a new phenomenon or whatever else it is. Right. Uh, it would appear that it's come about in the last yes, couple of years. It, and candidly, in some, would you agree that part of it's been a political movement versus, you know? Oh, the, I'm sure that there are people that politicize this, absolutely. Well, I think they, they politicize it every every night on TV, I think. I mean, that's just what I'm, I, I, and we're, we, we feel like, I feel like we're putting our teachers and our students in the middle of this this fight. but. That's neither here nor there because, you know, I, I think that many of the things that we discussed during the regular session, um, you know, during this seven hour elongated debate that ended up, you know, that ended up taking a lot of time um, was, was concerning. But one of the things I want to make sure I'm clear on in, in the bill that you have offered here today, there are sections of the bill, and I believe you said it's on page eight. Um, and it's section just, is it just section one and two? That is current statute. That is current law that was implemented with? 3979. Th 39. This, this well, no, well, three, this is, no, this is what you're having in the bill, and you're trying to take this out. I, I would like to take this out. Okay, so you. if I look at 28.022. Lines 18 through 24. Okay, so I'm, I'm at the education code right now. And I'm trying to make sure I, I've got what you're trying to accomplish. So 28.022, if I'm looking at uh, what you're trying to accomplish, that's in current statute today, correct? That's in current statute, and I approached okay. Chairman Dutton, told him that we had talked about removing that. Okay. Let me just find it. I just want to make sure. Give me, just stand by for a second. That has been the crux of a lot of the... It, angst that teachers have had with us. Yeah, well, this is, a, this is, yeah, but, no, but you're adding, no, in this bill here, you're adding section 28.022. The current, the current, the current law goes 28.021 and 28.023, so you're adding 28.022. We're going to take this language out of the bill. You're taking all of 28.022 out. That's what you told me. Lines 18 through 24. Okay, so you're still, okay, let me back up. In the, I'm looking at the current education code. Okay. Current education code has 28.021 and 28.0023. There is no 28.022. You are adding section 28.022 to the current education code. I'd like to look at that with you afterwards, and we'll see if we can fix that together if you're open to it. Uh, no, I, okay, hold on a second. I'm going to make sure. Just, I think you're, I don't know if your staffers over there, but no, no, there's, there's, there's two, 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 two right here. Twenty eight point zero two two. Yeah, I call them. I don't know why that's there. This is twenty twenty though. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay. Oh, this is this oh, is the twenty twenty. This is twenty. This. This is 2020. We don't have the updated 21. Okay. I'm looking online at the, I'm looking online at the 21. Okay, uh, that's what it is. Yeah, so I'm online at the 21. So that's the difference. So you so we so there was in in, in 2020 there was a well, section. This 20. language didn't exist, right? right. That's this what is, I'm trying to get at. This is new language. 29. So you're this this is adding new language into the education code is what you're trying to accomplish. I want to take this out. This isn't 3979, and it hasn't been it hasn't been taken out of this bill. This committee substitute as yet. Okay. And it should be it. But, representative, so. it should be struck. It shouldn't be underlined. Yeah, maybe we'll get TEA up here just to verify. We'll get Vaughn up here because what I'm looking at the current education code, and I'm online right now. There is no section 28.022. So I just want to verify that Correct. I'm looking at it right. But regardless of that, that's right. So you want to take out sections drafting. one. You want to, let's just get to the bottom. Your section takes taking out section one and two. Correct. Leaving got in three. And got that. Okay, now I understand. And then everything else is going to stay the same. Yes. And you know, with respect to Representative Talrico, um, made a comment that I thought was you know, or not a comment, but it was a question, and and I think the way you answered it was. Um, you know, students can't lobby uh, on behalf. So why, why, why are we prohibiting students from being able to come and lobby on their behalf or, or their school or whatever else they want to do? What, what's, what's, why, are, why would we stop student them? Student is, that? as in the same with McKinney, students are more than welcome to come to the Capitol for extra credit, but they can't be used. They can't be used by um, uh, 
you know, for Planned Parenthood any more than they could be used by the NRA to come and lobby on behalf of issues. Again, this should be something that, that parents compel kids to do. If, if, if you want your kid to come and, you know, speak in, sure. in favor of, you know, more gun rights or abortion, Ooh. that should be up to a parent. I, I don't, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I just, your, your comment, I'm just trying to, I, I know what's in here. And I, people, you know, people are raising, shaking their heads yes and no and everything else. You just made a comment, students can't lobby. So what your comment is, mm -hmm. students can't lobby specifically or grades. By, by direction yes. of the school district or something along right. those lines. Right. But if you as a parent want your child to go to Austin or Washington and advance an issue, they're welcome to do that. Okay. All right, let me get to the most problematic part of the bill that I have. Um, section 26.0661. If, if I look at, um, if we look at under current education code, uh, which is disclosure 26.006, um, that allows us to, that, that basically is, if I'm, if I remember correctly, that is the parents' rights. So under chapter 26 is parental rights and responsibilities. There's a tremendous amount of rights and responsibilities. I know you don't have the education code in front of you, but that, that's what it is, 26.006. Um, talks about what parents are entitled to, access to teaching materials, all the things that a parent is entitled to. They are entitled to that. They get that. They're, they, they, are in, they, they get that. They get that within their syllabus. They get that within the, the reading materials, everything else that they get. Um, but they're not compelled to put it online. Schools are not compelled to put it online. They get it to the parent. What's that? They give it to the parent. They're not compelled to put it online. They, they, Representative, let me, let me get to the, let me, let me finish. Yes, sir. Okay. I'm sorry. The current law is very clear what they are, they are to give and what they're getting. Right. Okay. What you're doing is creating, in my mind, a huge list of information that they are now to be up to date with because you're talking about what do they teach, when do they teach it, posting all this instructional materials, everything else that they're supposed to be doing for every single class, for every single classroom. A right? syllabus or a plan for the year is something that teachers put together. Steve, and have you ever taught? I actually have. I've taught in seminaries. Okay. And, I, and when I sit down I, I, with students, I sit down and I say, these are the materials that we're going to cover. These are the books okay. that we're going to read. For the entire year? Yes. Really? Okay. Well, that's and, typically and not the way, that's and, typically and not if you, the If you look at it, it also gives the ability, it's aspirational too. It doesn't okay. say, Wow, you've got a plan, you've got to stick with it, you can't change. It, this is very aspirational. It makes note of the fact that if a teacher chooses to change it, and then within the next couple of weeks, if they'll simply put down the material that they taught from in, in its place, that's fine. So, okay. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best. I don't, I'm not, I, I'm, I'm making a point and a comment. I'm not trying to be yes, argumentative sir. with you. I told you I had a concern about this. Your opinion, your view, or your opinion is your opinion, and I know you think you're right. And I'm not saying I agree or disagree. What I do want to say is when I said to you, have you taught before? Many of us have. I have. I'm going through, I'm going back to school right now and watching some of the things and how it's learning. You, you, you have to create parameters of what's going to be out there and how right. we're going to do this. I have concerns that um, under, <clears throat> under current statutory laws that we have, where we're disclosing the materials to the teachers, to the parents, rather, and the students. Um, and I scratch my head and say, so now we're going to require every single thing that a teacher teaches to be online, everything. And they have, to, they have to figure out a way to do that. And they have to figure out how to get it online. And they have to go and through the process to do that. And that it's open source, and I get it. And what you're saying is, is that you want the ability for anybody and everybody to be able to look up whatever's being taught within the classroom. That's what you're trying to get to. Is that correct? Transparency, correct. Okay, so you want anybody, anybody, you know, the state, the country, the world, whatever, if they can go online, they can look sure. at what Ms. Smith is teaching in our classroom, right? <clears throat> and then, you know, for whatever reason, if they disagree with it, they can, you know, vilify Ms. Smith and social media and all the other stuff that goes with it. I mean, right? that's the world we live in, isn't it? So I mean, why in the hell would we put it on, on the Internet? <laughs> why don't we just let the parent whose the kid is going to that classroom, let them have the ability to communicate with that parent at that particular time? That's the point of having in section 26.006 is the access to the teaching materials for the students. Don't you when, agree? When, when we had C-Scope before the Texas House. Oh, I remember that, Bill. I remember 2013, that 2013, yeah. yeah. 
The Senate held hearings on it, and one of the things that was really truly egregious was the fact that teachers had signed non-disclosure agreements with ESC 13 to not disclose what was in C-Scope in violation of the Texas Code. And parents were appalled at that, that that was going on. Parents shouldn't have to fight um, to know what's going on in the classroom. Steve, they're... They, shouldn't have to, they shouldn't have to do a FOIA request to know what's going on inside the classroom. You're, you're appealing to the... You're, you're, I think what you're trying to appeal to, and I, and I, and I understand it, and I, I was there for the C-scope fight, and I get it, and it's gone. You know, um, there were egregious things, certainly, within what the ESCs were trying to, to publish. I'm not going to disagree with you at all. In fact, I voted for the bill. I was on the Education Committee when it came through. I get it, okay? Um, you know, something that was meant to be good turned really bad, you know, ultimately, right? I'm just struggling with the fact of all the things that we have to do. Now we have a teacher that needs to take their lesson plan mm -hmm. and all the information that they've taught, everything that they've done, and take more time on top of everything that they're doing and now publish this online. You're saying, well, it's transparency in this. To me, you know, I think about this, it's like, you know, uh, we're, we're trying to pick grains of sand, right, and pick them all out and put them in a, on a piece of paper and try to figure out, you know, what makes sense and what doesn't make sense. I, I just don't understand. If you have this and the parent has this, and that relationship between the teacher and the parent and the student is, is there. It's not between you and the teacher and the parent. And it's, wh wh why do you care what they're teaching at, at Atascacita High School or, or Conroe High School? Why do you care? You know, if they're teaching it directly with the parent and the teacher, that's really the direction I think we should ought to be thinking about. So I'm telling you, I, have a, I, I think that this is just so far overreaching. And what, I can, what I'm more, most concerned about is that, you know, and, and look, I voted for the, the bill that was originally came out of this committee during the mm -hmm. regular session. Right? I'm not, I don't, you know, I don't candidly know why we're rehashing this all over again, but here we are. Um, but... This part really concerns me because I, I'm sitting here thinking to myself, I know what the teachers have gone through. I know what they're doing. I know how hard they're working. And now we're saying, hmm, guess what? Now we want to know, everybody needs to know what you're teaching. And oh, by the way, it needs to be on. And if you change your lesson plan within seven days, then you've got to update it. And then who's going to make sure that it's accurate? And then who's going to enforce it? And what's the enforcement provision? And how do we do that? And I, just, and I look at this and I say, you know, I think this is, this is something that is, is really problematic for us. There's another component that I think is, that's, this is, that's interesting, is section 11.164, if you go back to there uh, in the education code, um, it talks of, and this was passed in, a nine, in 1997, but um, it varies, it's, it's very specific about Restriction of written information on school districts. Back in 1997, the legislature recognized that the impact of what the legislature was doing. I mean, by the way, Representative, and you know this, this is the education code in the state of Texas. Really? Let me see this. This is ridiculous. 1,800 pages. Mm -hmm. Ridiculous. Because we think we need to pass more laws instead of educating the kids. 1997, they passed a, a, passed a law that says the restricted of written information. And what it basically said was this, is that we are overwhelming our teachers in the classroom mm. by mandating, because we think we know better. Somebody gets, you know, I mean, I get it. You know, we all decide to pass laws and everything else that, that come up that we try to make the policy better. But we looked at this and said, hey, you know, the Paperwork Reduction Act, you know, really what we're trying to do is direct the Board of Trustees of each school district shall limit redundant requests for information and the number and length of written reports that a classroom teacher is required to prepare. And since we already, under section 26.006, require that we're supposed to provide that to the parents, this then becomes a redundant source. So theoretically, this would be then a cross, you know, problematic issue, you know, in the scheme of things. So you'd have to get rid of one of the two. You'd have to get rid of 26.006, right, or, or not pass this, one of the two that goes with it, right? That's theoretically what would happen okay. because you've got laws that are, that are constricting. So those are my, that is my major concern with this as, as, we, as we've gone forward. Um, you know, I, look, I don't, I, I mean, civics training, you know, fine, you know, no, no issues, you know, if that's what we think we need, that everybody believes that. I think if you just had a civics bill, everybody would be like, yeah, sure, great, you know? Yeah. Civics training, it's fine, perfect, no problem. 
Um, what is it? And, and oh, I know there was one last question on the civics stipend. You gave it to the commissioner. It says on, sec, on page two, section F, it says may receive a stipend in an amount determined by the commissioner. So this, this commissioner is going to determine the stipend. Is that what you're trying yes. to do? Yes. Why, why would we allow the commissioner? To, is he going to write a check? He's not here, is he? No, but <laughs> I don't know I if he's got the, the money for that. The, the thought was that there's a lot of federal money right now, and TEA could, could afford to, to make it possible for the ISDs to do this financially. Does he know that? It was his idea. Oh, really? Okay. All right, cool. Does he know what he's going to pay him? <laughs> I'm, I'm not advised, but you okay. and I can sit All down right, with him fine. and talk with him. I was just curious. I just thought that was interesting. I just didn't know where It that... was actually his idea. It was, oh. it was actually, the, the, it originated with Senator Campbell. And okay. then we went to Mike Morath with it, and Mike said, we can do it, and here's cool. how we'll do it. All right, but great. If you'd like to sit down with him, we can do that. You bet. Oh, I, yeah, I was just curious how, if he was going to get the money. Okay, Mr. Chairman, thank you. That's all I have. All thank right. Thank you.